God be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. So we do. I guess if this I guess where's where's Macedonia? <laughs> Look, twice in a row. Twice in a row they tried to go somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They tried to go into Asia, they were forbidden. They made another wrong turn and tried to go into my, my <laughs> they tried to go into Bethany and said, don't go over there either. <laughs> right. Okay now, now now these men, both of these men are filled with the spirit of God. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. But they still had to be led by the Spirit of God. But they, they, it sounded it sound like they one vision they had not, it didn't say the Holy Spirit gave this vision to them. It didn't. And they went, they, but if we have this power, are we free to use it? No. No, I think I think we should learn to, like you said, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and say, the Holy Spirit, unless I hear from you, regardless of what vision I get, I'm not going unless you I hear from you. Right? I mean, well, it, he he believed like, that the vision that he had gotten was from the Lord, though. So it says, assuredly, gathering yeah. that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. And that's why he went into Macedonia, because he felt like the vision was from God. But it is interesting, Jimmy, that all the other ones were clearly said by the Spirit what not to do. Right? Yeah. If, if this one is different as if that's a that's almost like, you know, I got a vision. <laughs> but it they gathered it with the Holy Spirit, but they were right. sure with the Holy Spirit right. of the first two. Well, you I know? think if you I think if you're doing something and you believe in your heart that that's what the Spirit of God told you to do and you go do it. Right. I don't think God is I don't think God will hold that against you. I don't think so either. That's what I'm saying. I think, I think that's think... obedience. I think you were being obedient. Even exactly. though you may have Mr. Mark got it wrong that time, yeah. you know. I think, I think they were doing it. I think ahead. they were putting it in verse 16, in verse 6 and 7. I think they really believed that the Spirit yeah. of God was leading them yeah. going to these places. Right. So they were no, don't go over there. Right. They would have been going over there or making an attempt to go over there if they didn't believe that God wanted them to go there. Agree. And, and, and do you think that Brother Addison doing what he did was he felt that he may still be doing what God told him to do? I don't. I think, I think about the time you move, the time you walk out that door, why did you walk out that door if you didn't feel the Holy Spirit say it was okay for you not to go? Why did you leave? Because I, I had finished eating. <laughs> and I sat there for a while. <laughs> and I didn't get anything to, to say. So you gathered this, you get to leave there, right? It wasn't a, a permission to, to stay or leave. It was just, well, maybe... Maybe I didn't hear God right. Well, I, okay. And, and, and so I just. I and this, you know what I'm trying to come from, right? And hey, Jimmy, I'm just saying if we could, sometimes, like you said, Jimmy, we may miss it. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, so my concern becomes, and I, that's why I asked Bishop, he said, die daily. And, um, and as, as the scriptures, you know, indicated too, there, there's, a, there's an attentiveness that we have. And then let, let me, does prayer, fasting, meditating, does that help us hear better? Well, I think, I, I want to throw something at you, uh, uh, Mr. Elder. When Absolutely. Said, you know, when the scripture said, let the peace of God rule, this wasn't, even in this scenario, there is a indication of getting a peace that I'm doing right by the Holy Spirit. Right? In that, in this verse we just read, there, there is a, I got, they gathered that they should go this way. They also gathered when it was forbidden. And they said the Holy Spirit wouldn't suffer them to go. In other words, they got no, they didn't give any peace. In this case, this peace that you're talking about in that verse has to do with putting yourself in position. Yes, yes sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Think of some things, okay, that your mind be in a certain place. Uh-huh. So that, so that when God moves. Come on now. You're more sensitive to discerning the things of God. Yes, sir. Well, that person is telling you that you can have peace about a certain decision or action that you made. Yes. I'm going to tell you that you need to be in this position. This is the best position to be in so that when God speaks. Yes, sir. 
you can actually stay on good what is lovely, what is the things of God, right? You're likely to be sensitive to what God says to be yeah. right. Mm -hmm. right. And I think and, and I think that's what we talked about saying is because Elvin, you gotta remember, he asked a question, right? How to to be making sure I'm doing God's will. And I'm saying is that that scripture, what we just you just quoted was talking about let the peace of God rule. And to me, like even the scripture we read with the Macedonian call, they were bit twice they were suffering. They didn't get peace to go to those other locations. Right. You know what I mean? There was no peace in it. You you saw, I mean, you got one that was clear. You were forbidden to go. Let me say, let me say something. Let me, let me just say this number of your things. See that text that where it says that what's the things are pure? What's yes, sir. Good. And it says, think of me things. Yes, sir. See, that kind of peace would secure you in times like this when you got trouble in our society with the elections and all this crazy stuff going on. Mm -hmm. If you were thinking on these things, none of that stuff wouldn't really move you. Exactly. <laughs> there is a. It's time to tell you, look, if you concentrate and put your focus on the things of God, on yes, God, then, it, then when turbulent times come, the peace of God will rule in your heart. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. And, Amen. And, and, Amen. And, and, and what I'm saying is, and so based on that scripture, we Acts 16, verse 6 to 10, they were moving to do the will of God. They were preaching wherever God sent them to go. They, they didn't go where God told them not to go. And then when they got a vision to go somewhere, because they were still thinking of what sort of things are good, what sort of things are here, what sort of things are honest, and good reports. Carl, they're gonna go there. They weren't going there to go party, right? If they went to Macedonia. And they went there to go continue to preach the gospel. That's all I'm saying. And, and, they had peace about this situation? I tension. think they, did. they had peace with the wrong decision. There's this word that said there's a way to seem right into a man the end there of his death. Most Come of us who have been in the gospel really tried to do the will of God. And we had peace with what we were doing. We were going, are you saying? I had great peace with walking up to people telling them that, asking them that. Would you put that to them? But it wasn't effective. It wasn't effective because it wasn't God that was leading me to do that. It was me. It was my flesh. It was my judgment. But you wouldn't put that, that, that script you just called it in the content of this this scripture here would you oh yeah definitely i would definitely yeah, because right into a man in the end there of his death if they had gone into if they had gone into those places at the time that they went it might not serve the purpose of god at a yeah, but come on y'all y'all have to be sensitive stuff jimmy you, you he went with the first nine is that he was called he got a vision to go help somebody oh not that one oh not that one I was talking no, about right, the one but I want make sure we got to make sure to put people in context. Yeah, yeah, let me put it in context. This, one, this one right here was Jimmy to go, the vision was to go help somebody or somebody asked for help in Macedonia. That still falls in line with the script that we quoted earlier. And you just said, but here's the deal here's the deal about that one though. After he had the vision and he was assured that God had told him to do it, if in fact. He'd have got a message like the other two plays from the Holy Spirit that don't go there. I don't right. think they, they they wouldn't have went to Macedonia either. But since right. he, he got the vision and then he didn't get anything saying, uh-uh, don't do that. Right. Then he felt like it was from the Lord. Right. And so I believe he did get the feats about it. And then he went on to Macedonia. Exactly. And that's why I wanted to visual that. I mean, El was asking the question, when, when do I make sure I'm doing God's will? Right? Hof I'm hopefully all the time. I'm saying is first is what he's trying to do is something that lines up with what's good, what's honest, and a good report. But also is the peace of the Holy Spirit that helps you determine whether you go in the right direction or not. Now I think Brother Allison did not have peace. And you have to use that example because the whole content is of us living this life, right? It's gospel. So that's what we're talking. That's why I'm using that example. And, and the question is, did you get a piece walking out that door when you left? It wasn't, it wasn't. No, is the answer. I think it was yeah. no. Oh, I, there was no peace in, in walking out the door. 
and there was more so a question of was that God? Mm, 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 mm. Well, when my dad, well, when and, my and daddy then, told me to do something, I didn't do it. I didn't have no peace. There was a yeah, fearful but, looking for a judgment. See, but that's that's <laughs> you, you know your you you know for a fact when your dad you ain't even got to be in the same room if your dad says something you knew it was your dad. He looking at you, right? He looking at you. Hey, look. And so and hey, so look, and if I didn't do it, that wasn't no peace. Yeah, <laughs> but see, this is the thing. You know, we're, we're constantly bombarded yeah. with, with information in our mind yes. throughout the day. Yes. So I heard this just as plain as in, as, as as we're talking right now. That's, okay. I think that's and yeah. and so I'm like, God, you know, if you want me to talk to him, give me what you want me to say. And so that was my whole my my, my mindset. Yeah. That, okay. I need it I more. believe this is this is God talking to me. Uh -huh. I really do, and I'm gonna sit here, and I am going to meditate and be sensitive to hear what He wants me to tell Him. But I had already heard that and did, yeah. Yeah. and hadn't yeah. got that revelation right. yet. Right. So, as I sat there and sat there, and I got nothing. I didn't. I didn't know if. If you know, by this time, I didn't know if okay, well, maybe that wasn't God, maybe that was just me wanting to do something good for them. So I said, Well, I'll just bless them by you know, paying for their meal. So I did that, went outside, then God confirmed that that was Him. Yes, that is my voice. And when I say, Do this, then just do that. Can I ask you a question? So that how was the how far? Oh, it, it took home. me from the time. To, to pay, to walk, get in the car, start the car up, light up a joint. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Help me. I'm just kidding. It took, and, and drove out, and, and I can just see this now. I watched a few this cars come by. I made that turn, yeah. and boom, the same voice. I told you to talk to me. Jimmy. Yes, sir. Now, based on what he just said, what do you think was been the appropriate actions to do? See, in my opinion, he then wanted to control the narrative. Well, yeah. God, if you told me this, then yeah. I need you to tell me what to say. Well, yeah. you don't tell God how to handle the situation. Yeah. Right. He, he tells you. And so right. then he's already told us that when he'll give us what to speak when it's time to speak. Right. So, of obviously he learned that and since that time he just go and follow the command that god oh, yeah. gave him right and then okay. once he engages in that situation god will give him what to say and how to say it at that right. particular time right but i mean at that particular point he was still uh, on them training wheels and he <laughs> yeah. felt like when he got over there he, he 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 needed some instructions in advance to feel comfortable with going yeah but 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 that's not what god said and so i think god was trying to teach him something that look I done took the training wheels off. You saying you still need them. I'm saying yeah. you don't need them. Yeah. But you still scared not to try to ride without them. But I'm telling you, you don't need them. Right. And I think he learned that he didn't need them and that he just needed to trust God. Yeah. yeah I, and, and I believe and that. that. Was I a, believe that. A great lesson. Now, let's beat up yeah. on, on Brother Johnson now. Uh-oh. <laughs> leave me alone. By that puppet. Hey, 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 before we do that, before we do that, before we do that, before we do that, before we do that the there's a scripture in the Bible referred to where he asked a child to, to go do something. And he the did. said, I'll do it, but he didn't. He had another one that said, I ain't going to do it, but turn around and did it. Uh -huh. When you left, I'm just asking, and I'm just using that new. I'll let you go. I won't bother you anymore. Why didn't you turn back around and go do what he told you to? You didn't tell you, me. You just left. No, it was the well, the instructions <laughs> was given before. I know that. Yeah, okay. He told you you could but find it, it was it was God teaching me something afterwards it, it wasn't to go back he didn't tell me to go back and say that he was he was telling me i asked you to go talk and i would have gave you 
what to say after you started the conversation. That was what I got. So it wasn't no unction to go back. Turn back around? To turn back yeah. around. It, it really good. wasn't. It was, it was like that whole moment was teachable to me. Okay. Even from me sitting there and then God putting that on my heart and in my mind. Go ahead, and, and saying what he said. So <laughs> now, Wilbur. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, Bishop, go ahead, Bishop. Hey. After they've been told to go into the promised land. Yes, sir. And they didn't do it. Yes, sir. After they got convicted, the next day they said, we're going. Oh, yes, Lord. Moses said, look, it's too late now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we going anyway. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Not oh, with God, you. with you. Exactly. That's, that's exactly. True. That's true. Once that's you true. miss your mama, but you better do it wait for the next instructions. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Amen. And that's okay. how, that's that, and, and thank you, uh, Bishop. That's basically how that, that went. There was no, there was no pull to go back. There to was no back. unction to go back. There was, no there was just God confirming his word that he did say that. And he was also teaching me to follow the simple instructions. They're, they're, they're simple. It, it was just amazing how he's like, it was just a simple instruction, but yet you couldn't follow that. And you want detailed information. <laughs> Amen, man. It was so much in it, That's you know, and, and then the meditating all the way back to Warner Robins right. from Dublin, you know, on that. I mean, I was, I was, I was blessed in it Amen. because Amen. the blessing for me was that I actually heard instructions from my father uh, yep. and Absolutely. was willing Absolutely. to do it, but didn't follow through. And that God loved me enough to instruct me on his instructions. Okay. Amen. You know okay, what I'm saying? So he, right. he 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 taught me the whole full lesson about that, and so yeah. that 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 was just a, a, a awesome thing. But I think it's a great I, testimony. Yeah. I think it's a great testimony because yeah. we get to hear it, and and it teaches us some things too. I mean, God may bring this back to our remembrance, but we're in that situation, yeah. and others that may listen to this as well may find themselves in the same situation, uh -huh. and this may encourage them to, you know what. Yeah. I remember hearing that brother's testimony, and I am going to step out and do what I believe God has said to do. So I think it's a, I think it's a very good lesson, and I think it's a good discussion about that because there's a lot of things that can be learned from that. And I yes, think sir. we brought I think we brought it out. And, and Myron is saying we'd have beat that horse to death, so get off yeah. of it. Yes, yeah, get, <laughs> we, we get off of it. <laughs> My shoulders is weary. And I like Jimmy. You know, <laughs> as, you make that, that, as you make that statement, there's something that comes to mind, though. When I first started this Bible study, I asked Pastor Taylor, when was the last time you heard from God? And when, oh, wow. when I asked him, this is several years, it seemed like a year ago or more, and I said, when was the last time you heard from God? And I didn't think about what I asked, you know, at the time, because I was really literally trying to find out how do I do this. Uh -huh. But that is the essential part of the Bible study. The Bible study is to actually get us in position where we can hear God. Yeah. And respond to what he's telling us. Right. Over these many months now that we've been together, I've, even with, with Lee, man, God bless America. This is like 27 years ago when me and Lee started studying together. I'm just coming to understanding that I should be able to hear yeah. <laughs> the voice of God. Yeah. Yeah. And in and, and this Bible study, these 27 years of growth has brought me to a point where I'm beginning to expect to hear the voice. That's it. I'm That's listening it. for it. It's like, okay, man, what you want me to do? I know you got something going on there, but yeah. it was a time in my life for 20 some years where I never asked that question. I don't read the book. I know what to do. Hey, go to Romans 10 and 9. You can get saved right here. Yeah. Here's what I have told myself, but I thought I knew because I read the book, and the book said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, then you shall be saved. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that that was just the load of the program. I got to hear from God to really work yeah. effectively. Exactly. But that gets you, but that got you to where you are. Yeah. That got and, me to where and, I am. And and let me say this, I think that positioning yourself. Yes. God gives you uh, information and 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 puts you in a better position <sighs> to actually hear and to learn of Him. 
because I know specific times when each one of you guys entered into my life. When when uh, when Bishop, we were on out in the parking lot, and for some strange reason, he came up and talked to me. And it, it was at the at the golf course, and I don't know if someone told him I was just getting ready to deploy to the Middle East or not, but he said he said, "Are you?" I can't remember how it started, but he he said, when are you leaving or something like that? The conversation got to that and we had never spoke before. And I told him I was going over there. Don't know how long I'll be gone, but I'll be in the Middle East. And so he said, I'm going to pray for you. And I and I remember that because we had never talked before. And he told me that. He said, brother, I'm going to pray for you. And I remember that. Jimmy, it was maybe 50 yards away from him <laughs> on the tee box when I first met him. And I told that story, you know, when I, when I said, hey, how you doing anything? And he said, working on the man in the mirror. I remember that. <laughs> uh, Brother Johnson, I was sitting in CFC and you came in and everybody recognized you. And, and your voice. I remember your voice when you came in, you know, saying, hey, Mer, hey, wait a minute, hey, Mer. Is that close? <laughs> very, very mad a little voice. But, uh, and then he, and, and he sung a song, and I and I remember that moment. And uh, very Pastor wonderful. Taylor, I had heard about you through Jimmy and met you at Kairos Amen. in Baldwin State Prison. Yeah. And and your voice stood out to me because you have a high pitched voice, right? And and your voice stood out, and I didn't even know that you were the one that uh, that was Jimmy talking. was talking about, Mister Hill. So there's there's moments that brought us all together. And I heard about this. I heard about Cairo from Jimmy, and I heard about this this uh, Bible study from Jimmy. And it was years later I actually came into it, and then all these people were a part of it. And C4, he just blew a hole into my life <laughs> <laughs> when we was in Bible study. I'll never forget him, you know, and, and his his uh, relationship with him because we see a whole lot of things, you know, the same way. And uh, so, yeah, everybody in this ministry I knew I was, it, it lets me know that I was positioning myself Amen. through, you know, through time and, and I was at the right time in the right place in certain areas. And uh, so you guys have, have all been a part of, part of my life in very, very vivid, memorable areas in my past and in my, in my present and in my future will, will be a part of. It will be always effective. And uh, I truly thank God that, you know, you guys are the answer to, to a prayer. And uh, so I just wanted to say that, that we, we position ourselves to hear from God. Exactly. I think God gives us signs that we are in the right place because it, it confirms it, you know, through time. Exactly. I think that's the whole point about that. And, 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 and Bishop, I'd like you to say, Bishop said, is that dying to self, David. Yeah. You know, we, we, we have to move ourselves out of the way to let the Holy Spirit have his way in our life. So for me, it's like the puppet uh, is Bishop, real. Uh, go ahead. Puppet perspective is real. <laughs> it's just that we got to be willing puppets. It's like because we always have the ability to lend our members to the devil when we start lending them to ourselves. But we're going to be, somebody's going to be pulling our strength. And, but, but who it is that we lend our members to, that's whose servant we are. So we do act as puppets, either for Satan or for the Lord. But we choose who we're going to serve. And I think that has been the thing for me is that I really have gone to the point where I know that I should be hearing from God. And there's things that I can put into place that assist me in hearing. Now, whether I obey or not, 
that's another story. But I can hear and I have heard from the Lord. Yeah. So, you know, that's where it's at with me. That makes it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that, Jimmy, uh, Bishop, go ahead, Bishop. I'm gonna clarify on one thing. To, to get this picture clear, we have to we have to get a vision of how God has ordained this thing to work. And you think about this thing. Each one of us, uh, in this conversation this morning, you know, God has ordained that each of us set to have our own individual body, physical body, hands and eyes and feet and brain and everything that makes you a human. In that body, there is only one head. Mm -hmm. Now, with the body of Christ, now when you start thinking about us as the body of Christ, you can understand the beauty and the glory of what God has done. Because now, in the body of Christ, even though there is a head, every last one of the members has a head. For they can think for themselves, reason for themselves, will for themselves, make choices for themselves. And yet, this body is expected to behave itself in unison and in oneness, without no division, without no schism. Mm -hmm. Now, I want, I want you to think about how does God, in fact, bring about that oneness and make sure there's no division? Because if Jesus said, any house divided against itself, it's going to yes. fall. It can't stay. In order then for God to be able to to have a union, a unified one past tense. When one is past tense, I call that one bit. In order for God to have a one body, he needs for all of the members to surrender their will to him. So that what you now are willing to do doesn't originate with you, it comes down to you. Yes. And in most cases, what is coming down is going to always be sacrificial in nature. Mm -hmm. So, so if we're going to be the body of Christ, he, he doesn't, he doesn't want to know what you think. He'll have a discussion about that initially. When you obey him, he'll have a discussion about you about what you think. But in the realm of perfection, as you matured and going on, you know that what you think is irrelevant. Unless that, that thinking is being influenced by the Spirit of God. So if the body of Christ is going to be one, and if our witness to the world is going to be effective, we're going to have to get out of ourselves and start focusing and seeking what God will, even in the midst of this crazy election stuff that's going on, I think we have the most glorious opportunity to witness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. The problem mm -hmm. is, we get caught up in the unjustness. Yes. <laughs> We get caught yes. up in it, and, 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 and the unrighteousness of it. Yes. And how, it, how it is disrespectful for us. And God is saying, that can be sacrificial if you are just be willing to deny yourself and die to that and look through the situation. Yes, that's it. Happened last night. It I had it. a question situation last night where something happened to me that, that, that pulled me up on the inside. And God finally pulled me to the phone about 4 o'clock and said, look at me. I, 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 I need you to be praying for these people. I don't need for you to be looking at what they did to you. I need for you to start interceding for these people. Cut up, man. Preach. How do you know that? How do you know that? Listen, because of my past experience, I was told to witness to a person in the water fountain and then do it the next, that, that night. Uh-huh. Went home and had a heart attack. So, see, there's too much stuff that we don't know. Mm-hmm. So we need to come to a place where we can, he puts, look, get over your little stuff. Don't get caught up in the external circumstance. Don't get caught up in the form of that thing. There's really something far more kingdom about this. And if you can get past yourself to the kingdom matters of it, then I can use you even now to fulfill the mission that Christ is into the world. Preach, yeah. brother, preach. And see, that is why we've got to, we got to know. I, I can think for myself, I can make some decisions. But I got 37 years of finding out. Every time I do that, screw up. There are consequences. Yep. And now I sit in the morning embracing. This is the verse I, I, I heard this week. 
Paul said, I bear in my body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That the life of Jesus might be made manifest in, manifest my, in my mortal body. You know the power I want now? I want the power to die. Hey, th thank you. Thank you. I don't want the power to heal nobody. I don't want the power to raise nobody from the dead. I want the power to die in those places. When the, when, when the flesh rises up and try to take control of me, I want God to grant me power to die right there. Yeah. Woo! So that I can stay focused on what this situation could be if I was out of the way. Yeah. Preach, man. Yeah.